Hi, and welcome to another episode of New to Me. I'm Stephen Michael Zack, and today we are finally taking a look at the Mosua Air Cross. Now, this is a three axis gimbal for your smaller mirrorless cameras, such as the Panasonic GH series, the Canon EOS M series, your Sony A7 series, your Nikon 1V3, and the Fuji X-T2 and X-T20 series. It, it has five points of adjustment, and it uses a Arca Swiss and Monfrotto plate. It is both, which is awesome, because that is the system that I use. So you can pull your camera off, put it right on your Manfrotto tripod, pull it off here, attach it to the Arca Swiss adjustment. It's great. Uh, accepts a, this accepts a payload of 3.9 pounds, and the battery lasts for 12 hours on a 2,000 milliamp batteries, on three of them. Uh, this also includes the camera control wires for both Panasonic and Sony, which is fantastic. You don't need to buy anything if you have a Sony or a Panasonic, you're good to go. And the app is fantastic, but we'll get into that in just a bit. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. Okay, first off we have the Mosua Air case and it has a nice plastic case. Again, not the greatest case, but these usually aren't. Um, very easy to open. We open it up, we take a look, we got all sorts of fun stuff, instructions and things like that. But it does come neatly packed and I do really like the foam that's in here. It's very rigid, very, seems like it'll protect this thing really well. So inside, of course, you have the gimbal itself. You have the handle with three batteries, which we won't take that out right now. You get this awesome charger. Now, this looks like you could actually put other batteries in. I'm not sure, I'm gonna have to check that out. But it is a really cool charger for your uh, batteries and it does have this really cool pop-out USB charger. Once again, gimbal batteries should be charged in computers, not through the wall. Uh, that is what is recommended but you have this really cool wire that stows away. Very cool. You have your Arca Swiss and Monfrotto plate. Uh, this is really cool. I actually use uh, Monfrotto and Arca Swiss, so the fact that this is both is really cool. And of course it has a quarter 20 in here. A cleaning cloth of with course, this. You have but, uh, your figure stand, you know. which is very cool that this is included. Uh, most gimbals, especially the Zyuin, uh, did not include this, but this is very cool that it comes with that. And it also comes with this little bag, which holds all your camera control wires, your charging wires. Uh, you get one for, you get a camera control wire for Sony, a camera control wire for Panasonic, and you get your basic wire. And this also has the lens uh, adapter, which I never use those because at that point it's just too heavy. And it also comes with this little plate. I think this is another little adapter. Not really sure what this is, but it uh, comes with it anyway. And that's what comes in the box. The Mosua Air App Assistant is one of the best apps I've ever seen. Your battery life is displayed right on the home screen. The settings menu is plentiful with customization and control. Calibration is a breeze with the gyroscope and accelerometer menu screen. The joystick mode that controls the camera is great for time lapses or a second AC and is really almost a drone-like control. And the camera control screen offers you a live view monitor as well as camera control. So my final thoughts on the Mosua Air Cross. This is a really fantastic gimbal. However, it is not a gimbal for the beginner user. Uh, this takes has a learning curve. Uh, you kind of have to use the app to calibrate it and really set it up. 
the way you want because when you push this joystick button, uh, this thing flies left and right and up and down. That is adjustable, but you have to go into the settings and just find what works for you. Uh, one thing I will say is this thing did not do well in high winds and neither did the ZU and Crane as we tested them both together. Uh, when we tried to do an episode in the park, it just, we couldn't get any usable footage because the motors were just being blown around and they were struggling. So really any gimbal is not good in high winds. So you, especially this one, because it's made for lighter cameras, your camera's lighter, this is gonna get blown around a lot if there's high winds. Uh, the mode button, and this is again true for all gimbals, I wish these would tell you what mode you're in. Uh, especially this one, I wish the mode button were separate like it is on the Zwing, um, because I found myself accidentally pushing the joystick and tilting the head and having to readjust. Or I found when clicking this, I didn't, it didn't necessarily move into the mode because I didn't click it fast enough. Uh, so again, I wish it were a separate button, but these are just small things. Um, other than that, this is a fantastic gimbal. Once I got it calibrated, once I got it up and running, it was fantastic. Um, the fact that you have the ability to do time lapses, the fact that you can, uh, you can have somebody controlling it while you have somebody doing the pitch and the yaw. Somebody doesn't need to be on the joystick. They could just be holding it and following the action and somebody else could be controlling the camera itself is awesome. Um, the extras, the camera control wires that are included are fantastic. Uh, I wish this thing came with the handles and the thumb uh, control. The thumb control is actually really cool because you could actually just tilt the thumb control like this and the head actually moves with it, which is a very cool feature. Um, yeah, but once you get this thing down, uh, this is a really great uh, intermediate slash expert crane. So that's it, that's all the time we have. So don't forget to leave your questions and comments in the notes below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and mash the bell button to get notified when we post episodes. I'm Stephen Michael Zack, and this is new to me.